Hey guys, if you recall, last time I was up on this trail here in the Colorado mountains was with the brand new Jeep 392. And if you recall, I said that the reason probably most people weren't going to take it off-road is because it was too precious, too expensive. Well, not today, because today we have this. It's a 2011 Jeep Liberty. And in this video, I'm going to show you why this is the perfect vehicle to take off-road. It's part of our new Cheap Jeep series that we just finished filming in Moab. And there are three, one, two, three reasons why this is a great off-roader. And we're going to take this old Jeep up to the uh, tree line and above. And I'm going to show you just how good it is off-road. And at the end of this video, I'm going to tell you what makes this Jeep so great for off-roading because I'm going to tell you how much it costs. But let's start with the number one reason why this 2011 Jeep Liberty is the perfect off-roader. And that is not that it's the Jet Edition. Yep, this is more, I think, designed for cruising the city streets uh, than it is for cruising the trails of Colorado. But, but... For some reason, and I don't know why, this Jet Edition came from the factory with this. Check it out. Full skid plate underneath the engine. And as you can see, Nathan apparently <laughs> already used it in Moab because there's red dust or dirt underneath it. It covers up the entire engine and differential, making it uh, actually really off-road worthy. And the only thing that we did to it to make it, well, capable of going up this, let's call it a 5 out of 10 trail here in Colorado, is we took off the standard wheels, threw on some steelies, then got our friends at Falcon to send us some Wild Peak ATs, uh, which are great, and took off, they were running boards, but maybe they are more like side steps because they hung down really low. That's the only thing we did to this after we bought it at a car auction to make it off-road worthy as part of our cheap Jeep series. Now in 2011 the second generation of Liberty got a really bad rap and deservedly so because it was expensive and because of the engine. 3.7 liter V6 that produced or produces 210 horsepower with at least at that time, 17 MPG combined, giving it the power of a V6 with the fuel economy of a V8. And that's not good. But you know what? 210 horsepower out here is plenty. You don't need any more. Now this particular example, hold on, I'm gonna have to do this again, has, I'll show you in a second, just under 100,000 miles which for 2011 isn't bad. Now the second generation of Jeep Liberty kind of went more boxy, went more square. Think of it, think of it as a budget Wrangler. Sure, it doesn't have the cool factor of the Wrangler, but what it does have, and forgive me if I'm out of breath, I'm up here at 9,000 feet above sea level, is actually a good on-road ride. Because as much as I love Wranglers, Let's face it, most people are going to spend most of their time on-road, not off-road. Plus, it gives you a good amount of space, certainly enough for four passengers and their stuff. I don't even know what's under here. I fear I've never even opened this, so let's find out. Oh, look at that, little cargo tray. How nice is that? It's got an Infinity sound system, and of course, these seats do fold down. And over here, let's see what this does. Oh, there's the jack. See, I'm learning things along with you. Hopefully, I won't have to use it. There's our spare tire uh, hiding under the back like in a pickup truck. Um, so it does give you a lot more on-road practicality, which is where you'll be driving it most of the time. Now, the one thing we didn't take off when we bought this are the mud flaps, and we did take it, like I said, to Moab, and we did bust one right there. Uh, which is easy to do. Now, uh, like I said, the best thing about this, let me show you, is the skid plate because it doesn't have a lot of ground clearance. 
But as you can see here, let me show you from this angle. If I can get under there. You can see the skid plate right there. There, there it is. It, it runs, runs along there and there and there. And it does cover most of the drivetrain. Uh, and that's important because that's what's going to get hit. Because like I say, we did not lift this. Uh, it is, like I said, more city than country. We do have one chrome <laughs> rearview mirror left. We do have this little funky push bar. And uh, this one disappeared. It also has this giant fabric sky top, which on all these broke. Um, and this one is no exception. Uh, normally these go for in the, let's say, twelve to $15 thousand dollar range i'll tell you at the end of this video how much we paid for it maybe we were stupid because we did get one with the broken sky top it works but as you can see right here and right there it does leak so uh, that is <laughs> certainly a big demerit all right well i said there were three things that made this ultimately the best off-roader for the budget so um let me start the engine, show you the amount of miles, uh, 97,588, which I think for 2011 is not bad. And we've got all the creature comforts. So we have heated seats. How good is that? We have the old Uconnect system, which I actually love. Uh, cruise control. And of course, you know, you can do things like zip through the menus and get your fuel economy. I wonder what my fuel economy is. Let's see, come on, menu, there it is. Oh, look at that, 19.5, so I'm beating the average. But then I'm, of course, just off-roading. Uh, there you go. My tire pressure monitors are gone because we swapped out the steelies, and it's 61 degrees out here. But what makes this number two so off-road worthy is right here, check it out. Yep, it's got two-wheel drive, or if you want, four-wheel drive lock or four low. And that four low is the key because it makes going off-road possible. Um, the other great thing that it has is a four-speed automatic transmission. Now, even though we don't have enough ground clearance, we'll probably be hitting the bottom of the Jeep here. I'm not worried about it because, like I said, the entire drivetrain is protected. Now, with that four low and, yes, a four-speed automatic transmission, I'll wager this is better off-road than any modern Subaru wilderness with a CVT and X mode because we've taken everything off-road. In fact, I believe Subaru is, uh, well, let's call it what it is, too scared to let us take their cars off-road because they're worried we may show that they're not as off-road capable as their commercials might suggest. But, like I said, we've taken everything off-road and in the hierarchy of off-road transmissions, the automatic with the torque converter is definitely the best and by far the most controllable. It just gives you really great throttle response, especially in four low mode. I can control my speed using my throttle and with a little bit of slip, it lets you crawl up and over obstacles and up and over these very interesting whoop de doos Now, um, this video, is brought to you by our friends at Onyx. I want to thank him for sponsoring uh, the off-road channel. Uh, if you're looking for a way to come on Deer Creek, which is what this path is called, called you can actually get an Onyx app that allows you to download a map. So even if you're out of service, you'll always know where you're going. And I know where I'm going. And that is, like I said, to about 11,000 feet above sea level uh, and above tree line. So let's talk about why people hated the Liberty. This is the second generation uh, Liberty, uh, which is much more squared off and much more baby Wrangler-like. That'd be a good description, I would say, with a much better ride on-road. Certainly not as capable off-road. I think I might hit here. No, I didn't, that's good. Um, but it feels very well put together. What's not good about it are these cheap plastic materials the kind of fake uh, wood there uh, uh, and uh, you know it doesn't feel like 
they used to, like it doesn't feel like I think at the time it was FCA uh, spent a lot of money on uh, the interior of this Jeep but that's okay because when you're off-roading it's gonna get dirty in here it's gonna get muddy and I really don't want a great interior I want something that I won't feel bad about getting dirty and I want something that's gonna you know hopefully clean off pretty reasonably and so what was bad back in 2011 is not so bad today now when it did came out there were other competitors that you could perhaps buy today um, for similar dollars you know like more off-road truck based vehicles I'm thinking about like the uh, Xterra, for instance, Nissan Xterra. That was more truck-based, probably gives you more ground clearance. Um, but having owned a whole bunch of Jeeps, I can promise you uh, that there's nothing that's probably cheaper to replace and fix uh, than a Jeep. Because as you know, or if you don't know, you should know, or maybe you do know, uh, the Xterra is no longer in production. And so support for it is getting much harder to find. So if you want to do things like upgrade it or lift it, uh, the bits and pieces are getting expensive because, well, the secondary market is not building them because they're not building the car. There's a truck anymore. The other thing I would say is in this price range, and I will tell you how much we paid for this at the end. Uh, we might hit here. Let's see if we hit. I'm not worried about it because we have skid plates. No, we didn't hit. Look at that. Maybe we have more ground clearance than I thought. Um, the other thing I know is in this price range, you could get yourself certainly a TJ Wrangler, uh, which we did uh, in California. And Tommy and I drove it straight from LA to Denver. Uh, and I can promise you that on road, uh, the TJ, especially the four cylinder, is not going to be anywhere near as comfortable uh, as this Liberty. And uh, maybe it's time that, that the Liberty got some well deserved. As you can tell, it's not struggling whatsoever off-road cred. You know, these were bought by people who wanted all-wheel drive and wanted the Jeep name, but never really wanted to go off-road. And if you did want to go off-road, you'd probably get yourself back then a Cherokee, uh, the old XJ. Um, and that was, of course, a much more off-road worthy vehicle because body on frame, much easier to lift yada 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 uh, but now these liberties are becoming very affordable i'll give you a hint we also bought the first generation liberty for the cheap jeep series and you can see that pretty soon on all tfl we'll be publishing that uh to our car channel uh one episode every sunday starting in august for the next five weeks where we show you how we bought these uh how we customized them and how they eventually did uh, when we took them to moab uh, but the first generation Liberty uh, is becoming very affordable. We actually bought ours uh, for three thousand um, dollars, and that's you know pretty darn good. And if you're in places like Colorado, uh, they're ubiquitous. Um, they're everywhere, easy to find, easy to get. Oh look, I'm smashing my chromed <laughs> rearview mirror into pine trees. Oh my, how could I be doing that? Am I not worried about breaking it? Watch, there we go. <laughs> no, of course I'm not worried about breaking it. And that's really the magic of a cheap Jeep. You don't really care whether you scratch it or you pinstripe it or you do anything else to it. Um, and really, what you want is a vehicle like this that you feel like it's confidence inspiring in terms of its ability to get you well beyond, like I said, a dirt road and up here to 11,000 feet above sea level. Uh, and this uh, Jeep does it. Quite frankly, uh, you know, when I bought this uh, for the cheap Jeep series, I was at a car auction. Hello. Hi. Hey. hey. That's a tough biking up here. When we bought this, I should say we, not I, um, at the car auction, I, we had just spent two days looking for cheap Jeeps on Craigslist, and uh, oh my, it was quite the uh, quite the debacle. I remember we went to look at one uh, that was a Liberty, first generation, where it was very affordable, low miles. I uh, had 
money to buy it. I told the seller, yep, I'll take it. I took it for a test drive, came back. The seller came back with the title and he said, oops, I forgot that it's a rebuilt title. And I was like, whoops, <laughs> I forgot I'm not going to buy this anymore. Uh, and when we bought it at the auction, it was like, we need a Jeep for a series. So I, I wasn't actually um, even thinking about this Jeep. It didn't even come to mind because I thought to myself, you know, these are just uh, kind of city runarounds, and especially this Jet Edition with those uh, side steps that hung down, you know, within, I'd say, three inches of the ground. I thought to myself, this is not going to be good. And then we got it back to the office and we looked underneath and we saw the skid plate and we said, holy cow, uh, this thing might have some off-road crud. And you can get a trail rated version of this. Um, and it does, you know, everything that a trail rated Jeep should do. Uh, and even though this is, like I said, the Jet Edition, it's not the trail rated one. Um, <laughs> it's doing everything that that 392 or the Bronco Raptor did when I took it up here. Uh, and I guess, you know, that's what really is the point of this video. I'm, I'm trying to show, show you guys that, you know, you don't need a lot of money, you don't need a lot of expertise, uh, you don't need a lot of anything to take a sorted Jeep off-road. All you need, you know, is a set of good tires, in this case, the Falcon Wild Peak All-Terrains, uh -uh, and, uh, a low range, and in a second I'll tell you, you know, the, the, the type of budget you need. There's some side by sides coming up behind me, and let's face it, um, when I started first off roading, I started doing it on dirt bikes, and then of course I switched to Jeeps, and now uh, we were just in Moab, and the world has completely, I mean, completely, been turned upside down with side by side. So they took over from the ATV where you're sitting on top of the machine, now you're sitting inside of the machine, and people are buying them. And uh, I will promise you, the cheapest new side-by-side -side is gonna cost twice as much uh, as this 2011 Jeep Liberty. And that side-by-side, -side, you won't be able to, at least in Colorado, drive on the road. So, I didn't air down, and the reason I didn't air down is because I already don't have enough ground clearance, so, I wasn't, uh, you know, looking to lose more ground clearance, but you know, I don't, I don't think I actually needed to air down. Uh, and in terms of its off-road ability, with that low range, not struggling for grip whatsoever. It's the right size. It's easy to point exactly where I want it to go. And even though I have been just a little bit hitting the bottom of the Jeep, it's not worrying me whatsoever because. There are skid plates down there, as you can tell. Nathan took a baseball-sized dent and put it into the front of the skid plate, <laughs> and, the, and the Jeep is fine. Uh, so I'm just going to pull over here. I'm going to allow these side by sides to, to to go by. Come up here, let them go by. Look at that. Didn't even care. Uh, and then we'll wrap up this video by letting you know how much we paid for this Jeep. So check out this view guys, look at this. Oh my gosh, how beautiful is that? And this Liberty didn't struggle. And I'll tell you how much we paid for it now uh, because we bought this at auction for $8,000. And I think that is a bargain for a vehicle that will take you, you know, up here and then drive you all the way home. Well, guys, thanks for joining me for another one-person, one-man pan off-road Jeep video. Uh, we're going to do a bunch more of these. Um, and um, like I said, the last time I was up here, I was in a $95,000 Jeep. And I got to tell you, I was worried about it much more, even though it didn't belong to me, um, than this uh, TFL Jeep that belongs to the company that I'm not worried about. Because you know why I'm not worried about it? It's got plenty of dings. There's one right there. Hard to tell on a black vehicle. It's got plenty of pinstripes. It's got plenty of... Uh, let me zoom out. It's got plenty of wear and tear. And for the cost of uh, a mud flap, um, some all-terrain wild peaks, 
uh, and steelies, you got yourself a budget off-roader and heck, even a push bar. And if you can get past the looks, yeah, that's not a grand design. But I do like the boxiness. And, you know, you've got yourself a great way to experience the wonders here in Colorado or in Moab. As always, this is Roman saying check out alltfl.com for more Jeep reviews. And I'll see you guys next time. And the sun's coming out. Thanks for joining me. Ciao.